How Bill Clinton went from signing the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996 to disavowing it today. I'm Rick Burke for the New York Times. Peter Baker covered the Clinton White House and joins me now from Washington. Now, Peter, you were there that night. You remember that night when Clinton signed DOMA under the cover of darkness. Tell me about it. Yeah, it's interesting to think about today, 17 years later. It's front page news. The Supreme Court, court takes up the issue this week. Uh, but back in the day, it was uh, something Bill Clinton was trying to uh, keep under the rug. He, he, was, he didn't really uh, like signing this bill. It defined under federal law marriage to be the union of a man and woman. And he felt trapped by Republicans who were trying to maneuver him into a bad position just weeks before an election. He'd been out on the campaign trail for four days. He lands back at the White House under, uh, under, after dark heads to the Oval Office and signs the bill at 12.50 a.m. Literally, uh, nobody knew that he had done it. The press secretary gets a call home saying, should we announce it or wait till the morning? Uh, and I remember the next morning we wrote the story. It, 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 it turned out to be nine paragraphs in the next day's uh, newspaper. It, it, it so seemed, you it seemed fell like a theoretical trap. political you, issue. Peter, you fell into their trap of, of not playing it up big as a story. I did in a way, absolutely. I mean, at the time, it seemed like more of a theoretical issue, a political issue. Uh, it didn't seem like something that was genuinely uh, changing, uh, you know, law in the country in the sense that no state at that time had same-sex marriage. So it but, seemed but, more... But let's think about this. I mean, I remember the year after, right after he got elected, I wrote a piece for the Times Magazine on Bob Hattoy, the first openly mm -hmm. gay man at the White House. He had all kinds of gay friends, from fundraisers from California and so forth. So wasn't the gay community at the time surprised that he did this? Or maybe not? Oh, was. Yeah, very surprised and very angry. A lot of people, obviously. It's, that's what makes it such an interesting story, because Bill Clinton was really the first president to openly court the gay community, to openly uh, embrace their priorities. He pushed for a workplace non-discrimination law. He had, as you pointed out, openly gay uh, advisors. He, he, he pushed for AIDS funding. Uh, he tried to get uh, uh, the military to open its doors to, uh, to gays and lesbians, didn't succeed, got a compromise that people didn't like called Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So when this came up, it, was, it felt like a betrayal, I think, to a lot of his friends uh, who considered it an act of uh, calculation of uh, politics over principle. But, but, and I think but, he's tried to live with that for the next, the next 17 years. But when you, Peter, when you talk about him living with it, and this is a purely political, pragmatic act, reading your piece today in the Times, you say he advised John Kerry to take the same position when Kerry was running for election. So was he really in his heart, is, is your sense, being pragmatic? Or did he really think gays should not have those that uh, be able to get married? Well, first of all, he, he denies the, uh, the, the report about uh, telling Kerry that in 2004. We should point that out. Uh, secondly, I think he's been conflicted. I mean, his position was, heading into 1996, was not in favor of same-sex marriage. And, and let's face it, a lot of, you know, uh, most politicians uh, of that era were in the same position. He was not unique in that regard. Very few, uh, even Democrats, were for same-sex marriage. Even civil unions hadn't really come up as a, as a widely accepted uh, idea. So uh, to him, the calculation was, is it worth risking a second term over vetoing a bill that had uh, such large margins in both houses that they would have been, his veto would have been overridden anyway. Uh, but it has always been a conflict with uh, President Clinton between uh, pragmatism and principle, between calculation uh, and where his heart is. So I think, I think he's struggled with those issues over the years and, and like many Americans in the last few years, uh, has come to see that his uh, old position you know, no longer uh, to him makes uh, sense the way it once did. Where does Hillary Clinton's statement on the same issue fit into this equation? Of course, she uh, came out very quickly after President Clinton uh, d repudiated DOMA this month and, and, and said she, too, was for same-sex marriage. She explained she couldn't have said that the last four years when she was still in office as Secretary of State. It wouldn't have been appropriate for the nation's top diplomat to weigh in on a domestic issue. Now she's come out for it. People think that suggests that she's obviously heading toward, uh, uh, you know, the runway for a 2016 presidential let's race. Not get go let's people not get started with the next presidential campaign just yet. Oh, come on. We're already three months in. Are you kidding? It's, but look, you know, I think she would have said this whether she's running for president anyway. I think that she, you know, felt that she was, uh, you know, trying to catch up to where uh, her party is and where her supporters are. So uh, it doesn't necessarily tell us anything about her ambition. Do you, is it your sense that she worked on 
her husband or that Chelsea had a role or any of the other out gay friends of, of Bill Clinton over the years had a role? I think clearly Chelsea, like a lot of families, the younger people uh, have been more open to same-sex marriage than the parents, and they have uh, nudged them along. Chelsea came out for same-sex marriage uh, in New York uh, the day before President Clinton endorsed uh, legislation there. Uh, and I think he's listened to his gay friends and gay supporters uh, going back years, and they've said to him, why are, you on, why are you on this side of the issue when you agree with us on so many other issues? And, and he, you know, he sort of inched his way over the last four years, especially closer and closer toward it. He, he said on a rope line, I'm, 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 not, for, I'm not against same-sex marriage anymore. Then he gives an interview to Anderson Cooper. Then he uh, comes out for the New York legislation and finally tapes robocalls uh, in North Carolina last year, uh, urging voters there to reject a constitutional ban on, on same-sex marriage. So okay. he's kind of piece by piece moved closer toward the position where he is today. Okay, now final question. Peter, I want you to do a journalistic redo. If you could go back 17 years, would you rewrite that story <laughs> and would you lobby for it to be on page one? Oh, absolutely, of course. I, you know, I don't think, you know, my, you know, my mistake at the time, I think a lot of people's mistake at the time was not to recognize how significant an issue this really was and how uh, relevant and tangible it would be in the years to come. Uh, you know, again, at that time, nobody, nobody thought that it had any impact on real lives. What one of President Clinton's aides said was, you know, why risk a second term on something where nobody's life will change the, the next day? Right. Uh, Peter, but thank it did you. eventually change pretty quickly. Thanks. Thanks much, Peter. I'm Rick Burke thank for The you. New York Times.